Benjamin Whittaker, 20 years old, middleweight, 75 kilograms. My big weapon is I can adjust. I make them adjust to me. And I've got a little flashy style, so people at home will want to watch me. My nickname's The Future. My cousin called me The Future, the future Olympian, future Commonwealth medalist. And uh, it's my time to put that into action. I believe I can. Since a kid, my dad's made me watch the logs of the Cuban boxers. Is hit and not get hit. So I go in there, I put on a bit of a performance, have a dance, you know. You've got to get the business done and get the, the wins. But I like to go out there and have a laugh and have fun. And uh, the more I enjoy it, the more I fight better. And how are you feeling going into the Commonwealth Games? Tell us a lot about how you've been boxing, your fitness and all that. I went to the youth Commonwealth Games, so I've seen a bit of it, but like, this is the big one now, this is the proper one, so I feel great. I'm in top form. Um, not long ago, I went to um, a tournament in Hungary called the Box Guy. I won gold there, beat some really top countries, got the best boxer of the tournament. And a week and a half ago, I had my WSB day being won by KO, so in top form, I've just got to keep the ball rolling now. You know, England have got a good tradition at Riddleweight. I think Anthony Fowler won gold last time, so a lot to live up to. <laughs> definitely, definitely. It's my time to shine. As a kid, you dream for these moments, and I'm ready, I'm ready. Do you know much about the competition that you're weight out there? Uh, truthfully, I don't really look into opponents. I just keep myself level-headed and focus on myself. You know, you can't overlook anyone. I think at games like this, don't be complacent, stay switched on, treat every fight as a final, and that's the best attitude to have. Listen to my commands. Touch your gloves. Good luck. What a contest we have in prospect here. So we're underway then. We're in the 75 kilogram middleweight division. And this to determine who will go through to the medal stage. It is between boxers from England and Scotland. The man. Wearing red is England's Ben Whittaker. He started very well with the left jab. The man who just trying to respond with bent arm shots is John Doherty. Good work with the, to the body with the left hand by Doherty during that coming together. Whittaker, ranked number 12 in the world. He's the second highest ranked boxer in the tournament. Vikas Krishanavinda is ranked at number seven. And these two men, well, they've met once before, and that was in the Commonwealth Games, the youth edition of the tournament in Samoa in 2015. It was in the final, the gold medal bout. And on that occasion, it was the boxer wearing blue who came away with the victory. Split decision win in that gold medal bout to claim Commonwealth Youth Games gold. Whitaker came away with the silver. And here they are in a contest to determine who will get some Commonwealth Games hardware here at Gold Coast 2018. Promises to be a belting contest this one. Both these boxers are GB members. They literally live together in camp week in, week out. They spar each other very regularly. Know each other down, you know, to a T. And they've boxed each other before. So friendly rivalry goes out the window, Ron, I'm afraid. Add the England and Scotland rivalry to it, then you have the makings of a good contest indeed. So they do know each other, and it'll be the boxer who Im imposes himself in that first round, who wins the first round, is, is probably the most important round of the contest, can dictate the tactics on both sides if you get your nose in front in that first round. Good left jab snaked in by Whitaker, and then a beautiful single shot. Whitaker doing like the Cubans used to do back in the 90s. Every time he lands a single, he's holding up the glove just to reinforce to the judges that it was a clean scoring blow that he landed. And it's a Cuban from that era who is Whitaker's boxing idol, Mario Kinderland, the two time Olympic champion. He's somebody who Whitaker has watched since he was a seven year old. His dad used to put the VHS tapes in. The DVDs, I suspect, from that era, and they would watch the old school Cubans go about their craft, and that is who Whitaker seeks to emulate during his boxing. Whitaker's had some success with his right hand here, he's moving into range and catching Doherty. But one of the problems he's got is leaving his feet there after that and just holding his feet. That's a little bit better. He's hitting with the right hand and then moving back out to distance. If you hold your feet against Doherty, then he comes back with his work. So it's important for Whitaker to land that shot, but at the same time, Doherty's got to get his timing right and try and catch Whitaker as he's coming forward. So first round in the book between these two familiar rivals. Let's see if we can listen in to what Mike Keane has to say. 
he's through his flanks, right? He's so many shots against the game. As soon as he's through the flanks, you're on a flank. He's on finish. You beat him inside. And you feel that nonsense. Keep your hands in. Get decent shots up. Don't see me. The jab is setting up. Step across to your left. And you're back to your back. Exactly. The pace is ready to sell. Good luck. All right, every time. Good job. You get the flurries in after. Yes, sir. Right, John. Right, John. Try not to fold it, but sit down on the shots nice and long. Got it, Ben? So sit on the shots nice and long so we're not falling in. And keep the gap between. Good boy, just stick to the boxing and the ball. Back to the end of Pullen giving you instructions in the red corner. Yeah, it doesn't want his boxer to fall in and maintain the gap. That's what Pullen was talking about there, Lee Pullen. So into the second round then. Both of these men took national titles last year. Whitaker, the reigning three-time national champion of England, having taken consecutive titles at the senior level in 16 and 17, preceded that with a youth title in 2015, so a seamless transition from the youth ranks through to the seniors. Good southpaw left from Doherty. He's taken six consecutive national titles up in Scotland from 2012 through to 2017, but he's not the reigning national champion because Scotland have already had the championship edition for this year that took place in March when of course Doherty was preparing for this his senior Commonwealth Games debut Whitaker just falling short with the right hand there he's got to measure the distance a little bit better Whitaker with his jab moving to range and then throw the right hand but it's very important that when he throws it that he hits the target if he falls in that's what his coach was alluding to. Doesn't want him to fall in, wants him to maintain the gap. But to do that, he's got to hit the target and be accurate with it. On the other hand, that was, see, that was better and then he's out to distance. But on the other hand, Mike Keane in the Scottish corner was talking about fast counters. Wait for Whittaker to lead off and then go back with your own left hand and catch him on the counter. And Doherty has had some success. But this contest is about accuracy. You've got to hit the target. And for Whitaker, he's got to maintain the gap. Rather untidy on the inside. The referee, Frank Fiacco, was allowing the boxers to work away, but none of them really took advantage of that opportunity. Plenty of fainting from both boxers, trying to draw a lead that they can counter. That was an eye-catching right from Whitaker, and it's untidy on the inside once again. Now that was good work from Whitaker there, because he measures with the jab. Threw a couple of jabs, found his range, measured, and then sent the right hand home. So that was a good shot. Doesn't need to be falling in, though. But what Doherty's probably got to do also, Ronald, is bring a left uppercut through. If Whitaker does lean over, then John Doherty may revert to the left uppercut to try and catch Whitaker on the inside. Very tactical. You can't afford to make mistakes at this level of boxing. Two tall middleweights working to fashion openings. Remember, the prize that awaits the victor is a place on the medal rostrum. It's rather untidy in the closing stages of the second round. So just three minutes to go to determine who will who will progress. So let's have a look here. When we to get there, it's he measured with the jab, caught. Docks it with the super right hand and then just skips away out of danger. There it is there. And he moves away and avoids the response on the counter. Lee Pullen there, we're just saying that he wants his boxer to trigger. Doherty off and then come back with his right hand. Let's see if he does it. So we're into the third and final round of this 75 kilogram middleweight quarterfinal. It's the third contest of the tournament for John Doherty. He had a really hard fought bout 
in the first preliminary round against Jean Albert, a rematch against the man from Mauritius. Great in the first two rounds. Albert came on really strong in the third and final round, but he came away with a unanimous points decision win. And then another unanimous points victory over Andreas Kokinos of Cyprus in the second preliminary round. Whitaker, it's his second contest having had a bite at the first preliminary stage and then he never got out of second gear against Daria Liebanks from the Cayman Islands. Knew far too much for him and just coasted his way to victory. That's how both men have arrived at this quarter-final stage. And this contest, you just get the sense, is very much in the balance. Remember, there are five scoring judges using the 10-point must system. Whose work have they preferred to this point? Well, both need a good last round, no, no doubt about that. Doherty probably needs to be a little bit busier. He's waiting a little bit too long. He's coming back with some good counters, but it's Whitaker who seems to be um, forcing the contest and doing a little bit more. So I think Doherty's just got to be a There's touch a busy. Oh, that's a cut on, on the inside there, Ronald. Did it come from a punch? Did it come from the head? We'll have to wait for the gesticulation of Frank Fiaco. Is a right hand targets in the area of that injury. That's a good left hand from Doherty. Now boxing with the inconvenience of a cut around his left eye. So beyond the midpoint of the third and final round. Still boxing as the counter puncher. Is Doherty waiting on the on the back foot? Again, Whitaker leading off. Now this Falling is where, in. let's have a look now. Let's see if we can see the gesture of Frank Friaco. Now, punch. Oh, head rather, yeah. Ronald. Knuckles bumped together, that is an accidental clash of heads. When the knuckle goes into the palm, that's the gesture from the official for a punch. So that means if this contest is stopped because of that injury, we will go to the scorecards. The two completed scores, two completed round scores will be taken into consideration, as will the portion of the third round that he scored should the bout be stopped prematurely. Good counter left hand on the retreat, and then a wonderful whipping right hand from Whitaker. Heads coming together on the inside once again, but of course that there's an increased probability of that when orthodox and southpaw boxers share a boxing ring. Look how close the lead legs are. If the shot's missed, there's an increased chance of the heads coming together, and that is what's caused the injury to the left orb of Doherty. And that's why we spoke about the accuracy, didn't we, earlier on. You've got to be very accurate in this sort of contest, because if you miss the target, you're going to fall in, and that's when there could be a clash of heads, and that cut is worsening now for Doherty. Closing seconds of the contest, that will have been a distraction for Doherty, will have done his utmost to remain concentrated, but boxing with that impairment, Blood could have been running into the eye to reduce his vision. Whitaker feels that he has done enough and he probably got the better of that third and final round. Familiarity all round, of course, between the boxers and the coaches, between these two G GB representatives. An incredibly tactical affair. Both men seeking a place in the final four. And it's Whitaker who produced a strong third and final round. But now they'll be replaying the fight in their minds as they await the official announcement as we wait to receive the verdict of the five scoring judges. Let's head up to centre ring and get that from the stadium announcer now. Who will be going through to the final four with a Commonwealth Games medal around their neck? And it's Doherty! John Doherty roaring with delight, pounding his chest in celebration because he has been declared as a split decision victor over his GB teammate, England Ben Whitaker. A 4-1 split in favour of the man in blue, nothing in it, 28-29 across the board. All five judges scoring it the same way, but four of them scoring it in favour of John Doherty. The man who took Commonwealth Youth Games gold in the final over Ben Whitaker has earned a repeat victory over Whitaker. Whitaker eliminated at the quarter-final stage. It's John Doherty who goes through to the final four. We will face off against the man from Cameroon, and he is absolutely ecstatic 
at having guaranteed himself at least a Commonwealth Games bronze. Well, it was a very close contest indeed, wasn't it? I actually thought it might may have gone the other way. That last round, I thought Whitaker probably just did enough, but not according to the judges. That's the main. That's the main thing. So that's the final four lineup, and what a lineup it is. Vikas Krishan, the seventh rank boxer in the world, Stephen Donnelly, bronze medalist from four years ago at welterweight, the talented man from Cameroon, Wilfred Say Sengwe, and they are joined by John Doherty, at least Commonwealth Games bronze. He'll be looking to emulate the accomplishment he had three years ago in Samoa and make it through to the final and fight for Commonwealth Games gold. Let's hear his immediate post-fight thoughts now. He's with Jessica Creighton. Yes, thanks, Ron. We've got John with us now. John, it's always exciting when it's an all-British matchup. You two know all about each other, having trained together at the GB squad. Do you feel like you made the most of that one? Definitely. Um, Boxing the Youth Commonwealth Games in 2015 in the final, and it was a very close fight. Very close. I just edged it again. And then, uh, obviously, we're on Team GB together and uh, we spy each other all the time. But I know there's going to fight, so I didn't show my full potential in the sparring with him. He got confidence in me, he beat me in the sparring, but that sparring to me, all that is in there. And I've and I done it, tactics with Team Scotland, the Scotland coaches and that, they've got tactics right and we won on the night, better than one. You've guaranteed yourself at least a bronze medal now, how does that feel? Yeah, it feels good. Very, very happy with a bronze medal, but gold's all on my mind. That's all I said I was going to come here for. It's gold. I've still got hard fights in front of me, but uh, I'm, I'm more than ready. More than ready. Speaking of hard fights, you've got Cameroon next in the semi-finals. Flair fighter, stylish fighter. Do you know much about him? Uh, I've seen him. He went to Olympics and that, and uh, it, I, I'm more than capable of beating him. That was my hardest fight in this tournament. I think will be my hardest fight in the tournament. That Cameroon boy, he's, uh, he's had the hit. He's, he's like hands down and walks all the hands down. I'll, I'll catch him like that. I'm more confident winning that fight. You seem to be getting better with each round. How confident are you of gold? Oh, I'm, that's always on my mind. It's gold. And the way I'm performing, my first, first fight was like okay, my second and the third fight's even better. So I can feel myself. I've still got another few more gears I can go up. But listen, I've just beat a very good boy there. So happy, happy, happy days. Rest up and uh, prepare for the semi on Friday. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you very much. Cheers.